Good morning. Welcome to Harmony of the Gospels. Today we are in lesson 48. This lesson today is um, the forgiving and healing of the paralytic man. Okay, um, And it's where the paralytic man was taken up to the top of the rooftop. And they opened a hole in the roof and let the paralytic man down through the roof in front of Jesus so that he could be healed. Um, so the, the overall topic, though, is um, what is our internal need? Jesus Christ knows that. I've talked about that in, in the past. Um, but what our deepest need is, is, is to not be led by um, our, um, our own thoughts, our own understanding of things. Okay? Uh, so the, the, the thought is, uh, we are often misled by a misguided heart. Okay? Well, we take and put um, our thoughts into something and think that it's right. Okay? And, and that's a, often a big mistake if you don't have a good grounding in the Bible. Okay? All right, we're going to be in um, Matthew. Well, we're going to actually be in the book of Luke. Luke 5, 17 through 26. But the overall um, picture here, um, this provided by the Gospels, um, is Matthew 9, verses 1 through 8. Mark 2, verses 1 through 12, and Luke 5, verses 17 through 26. All right, let's say a quick word of prayer and we'll get started. Oh Lord, please be with me this day. Please lead and guide me. Please give me the strength I need. Lord, please open my eyes to the understanding of your word. Um, and Lord, help me to hear. Uh, Lord, I, I need you uh, so desperately in my life each day. Because, Lord, without you, my life is just not worth living. And, Lord, I thank thee for your grace. I thank thee for your blessings. And I look forward to your return, Lord. Please bless all the people that are hearing today. And uh, strengthen them, O oh Lord. And in your name, Jesus, amen. All righty. Uh, so we are going to read um, uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 17 through 26. Let's read 17 through 26. And it came to pass on a certain day he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors at law sitting by, which had come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. It's an excellent verse there. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, um, in a bed, a man which had been taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Okay, so they, they opened a hole in the roof and let the guy down. All right, we're gonna cover what they had to do to open that hole uh, and get, get him down to the roof, all right? Um, so, and when he saw their faith, so when Jesus saw the faith of the, the, the four people, who it, maybe it was more than four, um, but um, it may have been four to, to, to bring the bed in. It could have been five, I don't know, um, to bring the, the guy to Jesus. Um, but they let him down to the roof when he saw their faith, you know, the faith of the four and the faith of the guy on the bed, okay? Um, so just my thoughts on that. Uh, saw their faith, he said unto them, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, Reason ye in your hearts, whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk. Okay. Another interesting phrase that Jesus uses there to get them to think. Think about what they're thinking about. All right. Um, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereupon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed 
and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Very truly, if you saw someone like that, you'd be like, wow, this is a, this is a strange thing as a human being because you have this man, you know, sitting here, okay? And we know this man to be the son of God. You know, we do. At that day during this time frame, a lot of people did not, okay? But he's sitting there, okay? All right, and what happens, all right? All right, he says, thy sins be forgiven thee. And then people start complaining. Well, you only God can do that, all right? But then that man says, well, you know, is it easier to say that sins be forgiven thee or to rise up their bed and walk, okay? So Jesus Christ has power over flesh, okay? He can heal us, all right, as well as forgive us of our sins. So he shows the Pharisees in their, where their thinking is wrong, okay? All right, so, so last week, after the healing of the man that was full of leprosy, we talked about that last week, Jesus could no more enter into the cities in the area of Capernaum. He, he would secretly would enter, okay? So Jesus stayed in the desert or the wilderness areas until things sort of began to calm down, okay? So he stayed outside. He didn't let anyone know he was coming around. You know, if he did come around, but he just stayed in the, uh, the desert and the wilderness areas, okay? In Mark chapter 2, verse 1, it states, and again, Jesus entered into Capernaum. So he finally entered in, back into Capernaum. After some days of time had passed, so it explains it. He was out there a couple of days. After some days of time had passed, he enters into Capernaum. And the word got out. The word had got out, okay? And it was noised abroad that Jesus was in the house, the house of, like the house of Peter. The house that Jesus was in is thought to be Peter's house, actually. So, um, and Jesus most likely made his home there at Peter's house, all right? Because the Bible's pretty clear. The Son of Man had no place to, to rest his head. In Mark chapter 1, verses 29, um, we know that Peter's house, and so also in verse 35, we know that Peter's house was in Capernaum and that Jesus spent the night there uh, in these verses. So it is likely that Jesus made Peter's house his home. That's the thought, all right? So in Mark 2, 2, and straightway many people were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. So he preached the word, the gospel. He preached to them, all right? As they were still standing by listening. Many people came to this house where Jesus was. They wanted to hear what he had to say. They were inside. They were peering in at the door. They were peering in through the windows. They were gathered around and hanging on to every single word that Jesus spoke. They wanted to hear what he had to say. People were fascinated by Jesus Christ, okay? There was much enthusiasm to the return of Jesus into the city, so people were excited, okay? This crowd had gotten the attention of the Sanhedrin council, all right? So when you got to remember now, the opposition against Jesus had already was beginning to grow by the Sanhedrin council, all right? And so... The, all the religious leaders of this day, um, they had tried to find a way to, to contradict and criticize Jesus, all right? They were trying to find a way to, to take him in, you know, and lock him up. All right, so in, in Luke 5, verse 17, and it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors at law, okay, they had, had arrived, sitting by, okay, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. So they had come out from everywhere. They wanted to try and catch Jesus in a mistake and criticize him, all right? All right, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now, now this is an interesting phrase that's here in this gospel, all right? The fame of Jesus had sparked in the interest of the Sanhedrin council, okay? His ability to heal, his ability to just do all types of things. And so, and it sparked the, the, the interest of the Sanhedrin Council. So the Pharisees, who were the separated ones to the law of Moses, they were the teachers in the synagogues, and their clothing identified them as a Pharisee, what they wore. They were the religious examples for the Jewish people. They were also self-appointed guardians of the law, and the proper observance of the law, which included the interpretations and regulations that were handed down by tradition, okay? So, so not only did they have the law, but they had added to the law, okay? All right? 
So the Pharisees viewed the interpretations, these, these traditions, okay, them handed down, the, these regulations and stuff, as being as authoritative as the scriptures. And that was a mistake, okay? They had added to the Mosaic Law. So the doctors of law were also there at, the doctors of law, which it talks about, uh, that were also there are what we call the scribes, okay? Uh, the scribes studied, interpreted, and taught the law, okay? Um, they taught it in a both written and oral manner, okay? A scribe normally belonged to the party of the Pharisees, okay? But they were called doctors of law, okay? So during this day, the individuals, these, these individuals were the leaders of the day. Um, the other ones were the Sadducees. They were also in this group as well. A person could be charged uh, by these individuals for going against their teaching. If you felt that the Pharisees or Sadducees were wrong, and you said, well, these guys are wrong, they, they've added to the Mosaic Law, and then you spoke up against them or stood up against them, you were putting yourself in harm's way with the possibility of being excommunicated from the temple and the society, okay? So here are the Pharisees and Sadducees who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. They were there for one purpose and one purpose only, to, to poke holes in the lesson that Jesus was teaching, to criticize what Jesus was saying, okay? to uh, contradict anything that he said, all right? That was their purpose for being there. They would also try to build a case against Jesus, okay? Their purpose was evil. That was only their person, absolutely evil, okay? But the purpose for Jesus, okay, who was there, was to fulfill all of God's will and to accomplish and fulfill all the law and the prophets, what the prophets had said about him. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 states, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. So the religious leaders of this day had spent all their lives studying the accumulated religious traditions of man for the last 400 years since the Jews had returned from exile. They knew the Mosaic Law, okay? They, they knew um, many of the, the books that they had in the Bible, okay? But they were so concerned with religious traditions, they had lost sight of what the scriptures actually said. That was a problem, all right? So this is a warning of Proverbs to lean not to thine own understanding. This is what we're talking about, where your misguided heart leads you astray, okay? Leads you away from the Bible. So if you want to keep this, I would ask you, please keep this in mind as we teach this lesson about being led astray by a misguided heart. So leaning not to thine own understanding. So the last part of Luke chapter 5 verse 17 states, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Okay, The power of the Lord is present to heal you. Okay, The power of the Lord is always present to heal. All right. Okay, This is an amazing statement. The statement reaches out and sort of slaps you right in the face like this. Okay, All right. So the power of the Lord is always ever present to heal the lost soul and to heal us of our infirmities. It's always present, okay? The power of the Lord is always present. So, but do you tap into it, Christian? Do you trust? Do you have hope and faith in it, okay? Through prayer and trusting and faith. So Matthew Henry stated, Matthew Henry made this great statement, the power of the Lord was mighty to heal them. It was mighty to heal them, to heal their souls, to give them a new life, a new nature. Matthew Henry states, it may be meant and is so generally taken that this portion of the verse means the healing of those who were diseased in body. Whenever there was an occasion, Christ did not have to seek his power. The power of the Lord was always present to heal. It was always right there. The unique thing is the power of the Lord was present to heal. So, but the Pharisees and doctors at law were sitting there in the crowd, not sitting at his feet. They were sitting there in the crowd, criticizing, but they weren't sitting at his feet to learn, okay? But they were there to criticize as a spectator. They were not there to learn. They were there as censors. They were there as spies to pick apart every word and every phrase that Jesus stated. And they wanted to build a reproach or accusation against him they could take to the Sanhedrin council 
and used to condemn Jesus, okay? So their sins were never forgiven. Their spirits and souls were never healed. Their infirmities were never healed. They were there leaning on their own understanding and did not realize that their hearts were deceitful and were leading them away from the Christ who could heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. But they were led away by their own misguided hearts. Many today do not sit under the word of God. They sit by and they criticize the word of God, never seeing the deceitfulness of their own hearts. The people of today hear a tale that is told and they never hear the message of the gospel, okay? They, they were always hearing, but never hearing, okay? They never hear intently. They never listen, okay, to what's being said. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, In whom the God of the world blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So many today do not want to be preached to. They just don't, okay? Many they just don't want to be preached to, all right? They don't want to hear their sins, okay, that reside inside them. They don't want to be reminded of that, all right? The sin is the fountain of all sickness in our lives, okay? The forgiveness of the sin is the only foundation on which a recovery from sickness can be built. It's the forgiveness of that sin. People need preaching, they need teaching, and they need discipleship. Okay? They need all three. Folks, sin permeate, permeates our society, and the sins of our society are hidden to all those who cannot see the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. The people in our society lean on their own understanding of things where they are willing to follow the deceitfulness of their own hearts, leading themselves further into a filthy, demoralized society where everything is okay. So the Bible states clearly, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the gospel has to say. The gospel is clear that people need to be in church. Very clear, right? For as in the days of Noah, and this is where we're at today, for as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, verses 37 to 39. That's exactly where we sit today. Exactly where we sit. Clearly, the society of today does not care about God or His Holy Word or Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. They just don't care, okay? All right, people have head knowledge, but they do not have heart knowledge. And that's where we're at. And they're led away by their own understanding of things. Man is blinded by the God of this world, which is Satan. Man is blocked from heaven by his fallen state. This is our condition. And Jesus Christ knows this condition and provides a way to forgiveness. But Satan tries to block it, okay? All right? And he blocks it through the entertainment of this world. All right? It's so pervasive. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 through 10, uh, Jeremiah states, The heart is deceitful, of, deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So I'll tell you what, folks. We can't know our own sinful heart, okay? We can't know our own sinful condition, okay? So who can know it, all right? So the Lord states, he says, I, the Lord states, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings, okay? If you come before the cross, Jesus Christ is going to show you your sin, okay? He's going to show the fruit of your doings, okay? And it's going to upset you, all right? And you're going to cry and ask for his forgiveness, all right? That's where you need to be at, all right? So here set the Pharisees and scribes, okay? And the power of the Lord was present to heal them, okay? But they weren't interested. Their heart was deceitful and desperately wicked, okay? They did not know it. The world is full of people like this today, full of people like this, all right? They just don't know it now. Now, there was no room or anywhere for the people to get close to Jesus with this cot and with this man sick of the palsy. In Mark chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, it states this, And they came to him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four people. So four people were there, all right? And they could not come nigh to him because of the press. In Luke chapter 5, verse 18, it states, 
And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought a means to bring him in to lay him before Jesus. Okay? All right, in Luke chapter 5, verse 19, and when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop to let him down through the tiling with his couch in the midst before Jesus. Okay? All right, in Mark chapter 2, verse 4, it states, they uncovered the roof where Jesus was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed where the sick of the palsy lay. Okay, now I'm going to explain what, what this means here. A typical house this time had a flat roof, okay, that was accessible by some type of outside ladder or set of stairs, okay. The roof was made with beams and mats of thick branches. They lay these beams out, lay mats of thick branches on top, okay. And then they were cover all that with a mud, a layer of clay that was pressed down by a stone roller. They roll it back and forth on that roof. The clay then dried, and it was like a clay tiling. Okay, so once the area uh, where the tiling was removed, so they would have to pull up these blocks of clay tiling. Okay, the the man with the palsy could be let down, but they would have to break up the branches. The branch mat underneath, they have to break that up, okay? All right, and then let him down between the beams, the cross beams. And so they had to make the, the hole large enough for a man in his bed to go through it, okay? All right, can you imagine, you know, a man who may be 5'7 or 5'10, laying in a bed with his bed, being let down. So you kind of got the idea how big it needed to be. So you can only imagine the dust that might have filled the interior of the room where Jesus sat teaching as they began to break up those branches to get, to get him down in there. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, all record that Jesus saw their faith. He saw their efforts, all right? So Mark 2, verse 5 states, when Jesus saw their faith, Jesus saw the faith of the paralyzed man and his friends in their bold action to put the man before Jesus through the roof, okay? They, they all could see the faith, okay? Jesus said to the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Jesus knew the greatest internal need was for the paralytic man to be saved. His sins be forgiven. The cords of our iniquity are the bands of our affliction. The cords of our iniquity are the bands of our affliction. So Jesus first meets the man's deepest internal need eternal need which the man himself could not fully discern, which was the need to have your sins forgiven. Okay? I mean, that's the root right there, your sins to be forgiven. Now, what was the response of the scribes? In Mark 2, verse 6, there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. They were thinking, wow, look at this man say that. This goes against the Mosaic law. This man can't do that, you know? So they were reasoning with their hearts, okay? and their hearts were deceitful and desperately wicked. So they were leaning to their own understanding. The sinful human heart makes a mess of everything. You name the area, okay? The sinful heart makes a mess of it, I'm telling you. Absolutely does, I know this for a fact, all right? The Pharisees, Sadducees, this was a distortion of the law for them, okay? All of the traditions of the last 400 years had confused them. It had caused them to reject the very one who could heal them. So look at what they say now, okay? Mark 2, verse 7. Why does this man speak blasphemies? That's the first thing they say, okay? Who can forgive sins but God only? Okay, in Luke chapter 5, verse 21, it states, The scribes and Pharisees began to reasoning, saying, Who is this which speaketh this blasphemy? All right? Who can forgive sins but God alone? So in Jewish theology, the Messiah could not forgive sins. But Jesus, forgiveness of sins, was a claim to deity. Okay? They believed only God could, could forgive sins. And they, they believed that not even the Messiah could forgive sins. Okay? Only God could. Okay? They were very confused in their traditions. All right? So Jesus forgiving the sins for them was very blasphemous, okay? And was most the most serious sin a man could commit, okay? They didn't truly understand who Jesus was. Mark 2, verse 8, And immediately when Jesus perceived in the Spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, 
Jesus said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Remember, a heart is deceitful, okay? It will always reason incorrectly because that person leans on their own understanding, okay? A misguided heart. Jesus knows their internal problem. So Mark 2 verse 9, Jesus now states whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. Okay? <laughs> so which is easier? The forgiveness of sins, or is the healing easier? Well, I'm going to tell you, neither one. Okay? All right? Today, you have these people who think they can make you say a bunch of Hail Mary statements, and then your sins are forgiven. All right? You also have those who, uh, these uh, quoted faith healers, you know, all right, who say they can heal you, okay, and they can't heal you, all right, all right, so both the forgiveness of sins and the healing is impossible with man, but with God and only through his son, Jesus Christ, is the forgiveness of sin and healing equally easy, only he can do it, all right, in Mark chapter 2 verse 10, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Jesus saith to the sick of the palsy, in Mark 2, verse 11, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. So let's jump over to Luke chapter 5, verse 25 through 26. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. I'm sure that the people parted and let the guy through with that bed, carrying it. It's amazing. And they were all amazed and glorified God, not the Pharisees and scribes. I'm sure that they had a lot to think about. And were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Now, I'm going to get ready to close here. I am sure the scribes likely felt this way because they had just seen something that they could not explain by man's wisdom or by leaning to one's own understanding. So it gave him something to really think about, okay? All right, folks, the power of God is, the power of the Lord is present to heal you. The power of God's always present to heal you, okay? Your family, your friends, this nation, where you live. People need to hear the word of God. They need to hear the gospel, or they will be led by a, they will be misled by a malign and misguided heart, okay? This is what's going to happen. And we see it clearly today. You must understand, Christian folks, that lost folks are always led by a misguided heart that leans on their own understanding of things. Okay? Christians are complacent today. Very complacent. Say, Christians have the power of Jesus in their lives that can affect our society, but the Christians don't speak out today. And that's the danger of what's going on. All right? So things get worse and worse in our society. Paul stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3-4, through 4, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay? The people of this world are blinded by Satan. They sit in darkness, and they're not aware of their darkness. Okay? They sit in the bondage of sin and are not aware of their bondage of sin. The lost are blocked from heaven. Okay? They will never go there. Jesus told Nicodemus, except, thy, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's John 3.3. 3. The Christian has the gospel and the love of God. So the lost are blinded and blocked. Okay? So there's two types of people in this world, the Christian and the lost. So the lost are blinded and blocked. They follow a misguided heart that uses a faulty understanding. So when you see the laws of this country favoring the sinful, the fomenter, the killer, the idolater, the adulterer, the, the, the gay and lesbian communities, laws that go against the Christian faith, um, laws that go against the Bible, laws that allow sex changes, do not be surprised, Christian. It's because we don't speak out, okay? All right, don't be surprised. Romans chapter one covers this in great detail, okay? All right, here is why. Paul stated the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is blinded for them. If you, a Christian, don't share the word of God, 
then things will get worse and worse and worse. If pastors in fear do not preach or they fail to preach on sin, they fail to preach on salvation, they fail to preach on hell, okay, then they have sinned themselves and have become part of the problem, which is the tickling of people's itching ears. So you're telling people what they want to hear and you're not preaching at people, telling them that they're wrong and they're sinful, okay? The power of Jesus sits within us, okay? Waiting to heal the lost, okay? The gospel, to spread those gospel seeds so that the Holy Spirit can heal. Paul stated clearly in First and Second Corinthians, no, First Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 10, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither for the fornicator, the idolater, the adulterer, the effeminate, the abuser of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. None of these people shall inherit the kingdom of God. Folks, we see all this clearly today in front of our eyes. It has been 247 years, maybe it's 248 years, since this country was founded on God, okay? Our Constitution was founded on God 248 years, okay? Sometimes it will only take a, a 80 years or 100 years for the Israelite nation to fail back into idolatry. So here we are, 248 years. So since the 1900s, entertainment has taken a hold on our society, and people are blinded by Satan. They are blocked from heaven. They are, their eyes have been kind of hidden so they can't see the gospel of Jesus Christ anymore, right? True sadness. And if we don't share the gospel, if preachers don't preach on sin and salvation and hell, then the lost will never get better. They will never see the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. They will never see that their greatest internal need is Jesus. Just like the Pharisees and the scribes who sat there near Jesus Christ, the power of the Lord is present to heal them. It's always there to heal them. Okay? The power of the Lord's gospel is in us, which can heal our land. We just have to show it. Thank you for listening.